Hey, how's it going, everybody? So, I just watched uh, the Care Bears again last night after probably, I don't know, t 20 years. <laughs> and uh, it was so deep, man. Like, it was, it was really had a lot of uh, Jungian psychology in it, uh, shadow work. It had um, nihilism, uh, had some Nietzsche in there. Uh, it had uh, it had a lot of really heavy elements in it that, you know, of course I did not notice as a child. But um, I remember loving that that movie and the show. And uh, me and my sister had all the bears, and um, they all like uh, had these different, you know, chest tattoos on them, <laughs> like uh, representing what their archetype is. And uh, and then when they uh, use their magic, it the their chest tattoo lights up, and 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 objects are things kind of, you know come out of their heart uh to help them on on their adventures <laughs> and i was like man this is really interesting uh this isn't like just only fluffy clouds and rainbow bicycles you know it's uh it's that too i mean which i love i love that stuff uh all the rainbow magic and the and the and the stars, the sentient stars, moving around and smiling and helping them do things. Um, I was like, wow, this is like the, um, you know, get crossing into you know Freud. This is like the super ego, you know. And then you had the Earth which is the ego and the kids representing that they're developing their egos, who they are, their identities. And then underneath that you have, you know, hell and the demons in the, in the form of the, uh, the evil lady in the book. You know, there's this, uh, evil spirit lady in this, uh, magical book. Anyway, uh, let me, let me tell you a little bit about the story. If you don't know about it, so it makes sense how he found the book. This little boy. Um, I, I found this really cool picture, uh, this poster of the movie that kind of displays it really well. A, a lot of the other posters I saw were just a zoom in of the Care Bears on the boat looking out with a star telescope and like having a good time. But you zoom out and see the whole posters, all this evil under them, uncertainty, you know, there's these kids hanging off of a rope on the on the top right hand side and they're in peril um, it's not all sunshine and rainbows you know they're these bears are having to deal with some some heavy shit man like they're there's some serious stuff happening here it's 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 fucking with the entire pillars of reality uh you know, and it's and it's shaking up the clouds that they live in and destroying the human imagination. It also reminded me of another movie that came out, I think that year or the or the year before, The Never Ending Story. Um, because you know the feelings of the children directly impacted the world of the Care Bears. Anyway, okay, I'm getting sidetracked. This, there's this little boy, and he's a magician. Um, I think his, his parents died, and he's an orphan, and this this older magician took him in and made him his apprentice. And the kid was trying to, you know, get better and better at magic tricks to impress his, you know, adopted father. And... He did something and, and pissed his magician dad off. 
and his and his dad was reprimanding him and telling him, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that, and this is very, very bad. And the boy is very, so upset. He just wanted to make his dad proud. He just wants some respect. He's he's starting to turn into a man. He's he's you know I think he's a teenager, and uh, he just is trying to find his way. He's trying to he's trying to integrate his shadow and quit being such a a boy. And he's trying to strike out and make his own thing and stop being like told what to do. He wants to get his own respect. And he's finding out to do that, he has to be a little aggressive. But how aggressive? How aggressive? Okay. So he storms off and goes into the bedroom and slams the door or something. And, and his magician dad, you know, has all these old relics and artifacts and old magic books. And he sees this old magic book, you know, it looked like, you know, Viking runes in the book. These Nordic runes. And so, he's like, what's going on with this book? And then there's this chick's face that comes out of the book and starts talking to him. I shit you not. I'm, I'm serious. This green magic uh, smoke comes out of the book and turns into this lady's face that looks like, you know... The Wicked Witch or, you know, um, the evil lady in, in Snow White, that witch. Just the evil lady. Bad woman. You could see it all over her face. She got yellow eyes, look like snake teeth. Snow. Like a succubus, evil, evil demon bitch. Alright? And, and as soon as I saw that lady... I was like, holy fuck. It triggered something in me in my childhood memory matrix. I was like, oh my god, I remember this bitch. I remember this bitch. This this fucking smoke book lady. Beware. Danger book. Danger book. And, uh... <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I just I guess I just started tripping out. I was like, whoa, I, I can't believe I, I forgot about this. I, I probably saw this movie when I was so young. But it was still rattling around in there, man, in my mind. Anyway, uh, so she starts talking to the boy, and she's like, yeah, I have the magic spells and knowledge to give you to make you all powerful, and you, you, you're going to outdo your dad, and you're going to outdo everybody, and you're going to show them all that make fun of you. Okay, so, he's like, what? No, uh, I don't know, I don't know about this lady. Who, what, you're a magic talking lady book. What, what, what's going on? She's like, oh, I don't mind that. Look at my pages, and she's like, just read these words. And somehow, this boy, I guess, can read, you know, Nordic Viking rune language. And he just start, but he says like, "Icky dicky dabby dooby" or some some bullshit. Some <laughs> I don't know. It's not really Viking uh, language, man. Uh, but he says all this gibberish. He's like, "Bippity bobbity boo" or whatever, you know. And uh, starts doing magic, and she's showing. This boy, like, I see, I'm giving you this power. I can, I can show you more. I can, I can help you do anything. And uh, his dad, the magician dad, tries to break in there and be like, Ah, oh, you know, what are you doing? Get away from that book. What are you doing with that book? I right, get out of there. And he slam, he slams the door and gets out of there. He magics himself out of there or something. And then he, he, he finds like a hidden layer and and gets a cauldron. <laughs> he gets this giant. This giant pot, and he starts like throwing all this green shit in it, and making potions, and has this book open with this smoke lady talking out of with her face, her smoke face, and she's just like, "Yes, do do all the evil. Everybody hates you, and you should you should uh, hurt them." And oh yes, ha ha ha, do whatever I tell you. And so he just starts like making potions and shit for this this smoke book lady. I can't remember if she had a name or not. 
I need to find a shorter name for um, Evil Lady. The Evil Lady. So the Evil Lady uh, <laughs> was just like corrupting this, this boy because I guess he didn't have a mom or something and he's just listening to everything this lady's telling him because she's giving him attention, I guess. It's the, it's the first female attention he's got. In female approval, even though she's lying and taking advantage of him, it don't matter. He's like, young boy, he's just starting to grow up. He's eating all that up, man. And so, uh, <laughs> he starts releasing all this evil out of the, the cauldron. Um, it, it creates like a portal to hell or something, for, and this lady... Uh, evil lady is just like, yeah, pour all the demons out. and the, So they start terrorizing the town and destroying everything. And then he does a spell to make everybody... Um, well, first of all, he goes up on stage and tries to perform like his dad does. And this evil lady trips him up on purpose. And then it causes everybody in the town to laugh at him and make fun of him. And she did that so that it would make him mad and embarrass him, and he would turn against him and get evil. So she's manipulating him. So anyway, when they start laughing at him, he does a spell. He says, oh, I'll show you. And he t does a spell that makes everybody hate each other. Like they, like he thinks they hate him. They don't hate him. They were laughing at him. But in his mind, he's like, oh, y'all hate me. I'm going to make y'all hate each other like you hate me. And so they all start hitting each other and beating the crap out of one of these kids. It got extremely violent very quickly. Zero to a thousand miles an hour right then and there. And uh, and then when that happened, it, all these cloud quakes happened up in Care Bear Land and started fucking up all their buildings and everything was falling down and their rainbow teleporters getting all messed up. It's all on the fritz. It's not teleporting all the all the care bears where they need to go to 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 have people care about each other, right? So this is a disaster. Okay, I mean, my God, what is going on? Nihilism. A hole has been torn inside of the the minds of children and the adults, and everybody turned against each other and started spray painting graffiti like, "I hate you, hate." Hate, hate this. I hate all of this. And uh, I was like, huh. I mean, that it's pretty generic. It is a kids movie, but I can see what that would be in reality. Just like all kinds of different slurs, this and that, different this group against that group for whatever reason. But can you imagine each individual hating every other individual just because they're a different individual? And that's what happened in this movie. <laughs> I was like, what? That's crazy. Wow. That's pretty deep, man. And it kind of goes a step further than the never-ending story. Because it makes the direct connection to humanity and the Care Bear world of, of dreams and hope, children's hopes and dreams. And the health of the earth. And the, the Care Bears even have this heart meter um, up there, like a clock. It's like their clock tower, the heart meter. Um, and they want to bring it, bring up the care meter as high as possible so people care about their children and the children care about each other. And the world is stable and, and good things can happen. Good dreams can happen. Um, good inventions can happen because the Care Bears were up there inventing all kinds of neat stuff trying to help them and that was an important point they were making they were like let's all work together and invent cool teleporters and rainbow bicycles that fly and all this imaginary uh, you know children's ideas that uh, you know about about how great things could be um, if we just all cared about each other I mean, what a powerful idea to, you know, and uh, it had so many, you know, Christian qualities to it, um, you know, infused in, in, in the bears, um, and bears are, you know, ferocious creatures, 
you know, um, but they made these cute bears with these chest tattoos that shot magic out of them when they believed in, in each other. So you're like blending, you know, Indian, I'm sorry, Native American mysticism, Carl Jung archetypes with the magic tattoos, um, animal, spirit animals, because um, they had lines in their, t they, they had a, um, a forest of feelings next to Carolot. I love these names, man. <laughs> they're awesome. Uh, they're great. And, and it's wonderful for children. And uh, definitely, definitely going to be showing my children this, this story. Um, and you know, uh, this is another thing that 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 is really I want that I really want to impress upon everybody is when you watch a children's movie um I'm sorry I need to turn that thing off Okay, sorry about that. Had had the scanner on. Um, what what <laughs> what I really want to impress upon everybody is when you watch a children's movie and you're not also engaged in it, and it's not helping you order your mind too, then you really shouldn't be having your kids watch it either. Um. Because you want them to develop, you want them to grow, you want them to learn, you want these things to be instilled, you know, in them. You know, you want them to learn these things early on in a cute way. And you don't want to make them feel helpless. You know, everybody has these teddy bears and cute things, and it's like a helplessness. It's helpless. These Care Bears are not helpless. They're very smart. They're strong. They're brave. That They don't give a fuck, man. They're coming right at you. You're evil. Uh, it's war, man. It's all of them. All of them. We're coming for you, man. It's, we're coming into your cave and, and lighting your ass up, man. It's a no-go. You're fucking with our care a lot. You're, you're fucking with our home. You're fucking with our people. You're hurting these kids down here that we care about. Man. I'm getting emotional about it. Because it gives me, it gave me the same feeling of like how God f feels about us. These bears. It's like these bears are, were angels, you know, up there in the clouds. You know, and I, I guess it's scary to, I don't know, I guess it's scary to kids that if you had these angels with wings up there getting all pissed off and wanting to fight demons and the true nature of demons. So it was like a soft core Christianity for kids is what I, st you know, because there's some brutal things in the Bible. You know, it's a lot of killing, and I think kids have a hard time dealing with that. So, with this, instead they're shooting magic rainbows and dissipating dark demons with light, um, instead of blood and stuff. So, <laughs> anyway, these bears care so much, and they're like angels, you know, and uh, it's like they hold no quarter for these demons. For evil, for people that are hurting others, it is deeply personal for each and every one of them that you are fucking with the earth. Um, 
and I and I was like, I got uh, invested. I was like, yeah, man, yeah, fuck these demons. This, yeah, fuck these people. Let's let's go down there and and and, and we're gonna, we're gonna mess them up, man. And uh, all these things went wrong. Their their rainbow teleporter got busted by this evil lady. Um, their rainbow bicycle got shot out of the sky. Ah, uh, all their inventions started to fail that they use with their caring and their intelligence. Um, the stars were falling, the clouds were breaking, uh, you know, and then they were just like, we got to do something else. We got to find another way quick before everything is gone. And so they, they, they built a boat and invent this thing and use a star to power that they, they had this giant star that they use as the sail of the boat. So it's a star sail boat. And they use it to travel through, you know, the universe or whatever, man, and get to Earth. They're like, wait, it's a long journey to Earth. We gotta get to Earth, and they gotta go through the forest of feelings and above all this stuff. So they they get on the river through the clouds on this star sailboat. I'm like, wow, this imagery is amazing. This is uh, they don't have it in the poster. It's just a regular sailboat in the poster. But in the movie, that the sail is a star, a big smiling star that is always looking around at all the different stuff happening. And so they use that that star sail boat to get to Earth and meet all these different creatures, um, good and bad. They meet, you know, a penguin, a lion, and the and the the, the animals don't have chest tattoos, which was interesting. They don't have you know, um, the, the magical powers and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And, uh, but it doesn't matter, they have their own, you know, strengths that they can bring to the table and help the Care Bears because it's the evil that is being wrought on the earth with the little boys casting the spells of hate causing everybody to stop caring about each other is destroying the forest of feelings as well. It's interesting. I guess the the forest of feelings is a mixture of of all the different emotions, and care a lot. It, it seemed to be uh, in a higher realm, more in the clouds, not in a forest with trees and things. It was more, you know, like like snowy mountains. It was like I don't know. It was more uh, no trees. I just saw buildings and clouds and um, like a desert or something. I don't know. They were in a desert. There's nothing really there, no for no forest. It was just the bears and their inventions and their buildings. But then there's the forest with all the other different things. So anyway, let me distill this thought real quick, what I'm having, make it clear. Um... The, the force of feelings is more of a prism of all the different aspects of humanity and life. And caring, the care, care a lot, is a more evolved sense of caring about one another and helping one another. Helping. And I guess that's a higher brain circuit. I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with my terminology. I don't have good jargons. <laughs> um, let's see. So yeah, you have you have like the evil lady in hell. Then you have the earth. Then you have the forest of feelings. Then you have Carolot, I think is the hierarchy in the movie, in the 1985 movie. So they're traveling from the top and going down to the earth and trying to save the earth from darkness and hate. So they make all these friends in the forest of feelings and they continue on. And uh, they make all these friends and learn all these new things and get new experiences to become more powerful. 
and everybody brings something to the table and boards the star ship <laughs> and um, eventually they make it to earth through the clouds and then go down on a river on the earth and they see everybody's like you know at war you know burning everything down wrecking everything smashing their, all the windows the few people that you do see out are hitting each other and, and fighting and there's graffiti everywhere saying hate I hate everything I hate you I hate you all written in red uh, and it just kind of, you know, was chilling, really. I was like, whoa, this looks familiar. Hmm. The nihilism has crept in to humanity. The cycle of hate and murder and destruction and refusal of, you know, logic is reigning over. It's raining chaos, and the Care Bears and the and the the na and the ant forest animals are just they're distraught. They're like, oh my, oh my God, oh my God, what has happened? What what has happened to these people? What has happened to the children? Oh man, they're they're pissed. They don't know what to do. They got to go out there and find out. And they see this boy casting all these spells. And they got these two kids that are orphans that are um, trying to help them. Trying to help the Care Bears. They go along with them. And so they confront this boy. And they're like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this to everybody? Why, why are you making everybody hate and destroy everything? He's like, they don't like me. They're making fun of me and blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about me. And then all the Care Bears are like, that's not true. We care about you. He's like, yeah, whatever. You're just a bunch of stupid bears and you're 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 dumb and I don't care. And then um, and the animals are like, we care about you too. We know we care. He's like, you're you don't know anything. You know, you just live in the woods and you're you're dumb and you don't even have a house. And then um, finally, the children, the human children, are like. Yeah, but we care about you. I care, and we want to be your friend. And then he and he starts to kind of like get teary eyed. He's like, "No, nah, that's not true, really." And um, he's like, cast still casting all these evil spells and shooting lasers out of his fingers at the care bears and the animals and trying to trying to vaporize them and and kill them. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Ty, just give me a break. What are you doing? What are you doing? These little bears, man. They're just they're just trying to care about you. Just trying to care about you, man. Zapping them with magic. It's like, what a dick. Anyway, these kids come out like, we care about you. And he kind of kind of starts to care a little. And the evil lady starts to lose her grip on him. She's like, no, they're lying. They don't care about you. They're just scared of you. He's like, oh, yeah, that's right. You're scared of me. And he starts shooting magic everywhere, blah, blah, blah. And, um... trying to remember exactly in what order but anyway everybody has to come together um, and he finally started to feel bad this boy he started to feel guilt and he started to care just a little bit and I tell you what it was What started to change him was when the the human kids came up. It was everybody. I think it would have just been them. It wouldn't work. But if it was, it was everybody. It was the it was the height of caring. It was the forest of feelings animals. It was the human children all coming together that broke through to through hell and sprouted up a tree of hope inside of his mind and 
Evil's powerless against that. And it was that girl, I think. She looked at him and he looked at her and that was the first other female attention he got besides that evil lady. He, he uh, It was a nice girl that saw him do all this stuff, this shadow shit, and still cared about him. It was at his lowest moment after he had done so many horrible things. And still yet this person cared about him. And he didn't want to believe it at first, but it was true. And it broke through. The Care Bears energized their chest tattoos and shot magic at, at the evil lady. They never tried to hurt the little boy, the magician boy they always said we have to try to save him and some of the other care bears were like no we have to take him out he's too powerful and then the lead care bears were some of them like i don't know if there's leaders didn't I, it didn't seem like they had leaders it seemed like they all had different stuff going on i guess but uh like no we got to save him and So they started to turn the little boy good and he turned against that evil lady with the knowledge he had and they all took that bitch out. They, sh they, they slammed a book on that lady. Slammed it. And they took this key and stabbed her in the keyhole. And I shit you not, that's exactly what they did. Like a Dracula scene, like stabbing a vampire in the heart with a stake. They stabbed her in the book. Right in the keyhole and turn the key and she went ah, and it made all these fucked up noises. I'm like this is highly dramatic. They're really wanting to drive that point home. Of, this is a demon. You've got to kill it. No mercy. Hold no quarter. Kill this bitch. Slam the book on this bitch. Be done with it. Do not pass go and collect two hundred dollars. This is over. Okay, and they did. And then, uh, and then she died. And then they had a huge party up in the clouds. <laughs> huge. Biggest party ever. And everybody started caring on the earth again. And then everything was wonderful. And the rainbow teleporter worked. And everybody could teleport around and, and care about each other. And then I cried. Because it was beautiful. <laughs> and I see so many fucked up movies that, you know, just despair and everything's like based on Lovecraft and like you know, everything has to have a dark, abysmal ending. And I was like, my God, this is so good what happened here. This is such a good, uh, I want this to be real life. I'm going to make this real life. I'm going to make this real life for my town. I'm going to make this real life. And that's the kind of stuff it gets kids to think about. Like, yeah, I'm going to start to care. And I don't care if there's evil out there. I'll go after it. And I'll shine my chest tattoo on it until it lights up and dissipates, you know, up into the sky. Hell or high water. I'll build a friggin' star sail boat and travel across the universe to defeat evil if I have to, by God. Because this ain't gonna ruin my day, the day of my children, or the day of anybody else's. And you have that kind of fervor and intensity about you to go and care about the world. I was like, wow, what a powerful message. And now we can party. And they're having a huge party. And then the Care Bears are doing like their Care Bear science at Carolot <laughs> with all their rainbow science machines. And uh, oh, it's just so adorable. I love it so much. And they figured out a way to, to give the 
feelings of forest animals chest tattoos <laughs> so they can shoot magic out too, man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's beautiful. How glorious. Uh, we can all have chest tattoos now and fight evil together. Uh, it was great. It was great. And then the song. Oh my God, Jesus. The song gets you. The song, yeah, I mean, you, you thought, you thought the never ending story would, would get you. But, but this song, Care A Lot. Oh my God, I hadn't heard it in 20 years. Get that little tight thing in your, that little, uh, that little, uh, choke you up, you know, man? Starts to choke you up a little bit. Oh, man. But I, but I needed it. And adults do not need to shy away from these feelings of care. <laughs> that was the whole point of the movie, <laughs> was, um, you can't stop... You can't feel embarrassed about that, man. You you can't feel embarrassed about caring about people. That is evil. You have to you cannot feel embarrassed about smiling and bearing your chest tattoo to the world and saying, "You know what? I care about you all." And there's nothing you can do about it. You can make fun of me. You can um Throw stuff at me, and then I'm going to come fight you and do bear kung fu. But other than that, you can make fun of me, and I don't care. You can go on. You can go on and do whatever. <laughs> but I was just like, this This is one of the most based, epic, Christian films ever made. Um, and I wanted to share with everybody the the depth of it and the meaning of it the morality of it um, and what it means to me I think that <laughs> I think it has a lot of good lessons that we could all learn from in this day and age a blast from the past that could uh, rekindle some sort of care, and and I don't mean the type of blind, just like fake, mainstream media type of caring. This fake veneer, this fake, 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 fake L.A fake face, fake lip, fake color, makeup, fake, fake, fake tan, bullshit. You can call it, you know, whatever you want. Some people want to call it, you know, liberalization, but Republicans are guilty of it too. It's all bullshit. This fake caring, this glad handing, it's not real caring, it's, it's, it's manipulative, it's like that evil book lady. And, uh, the rainbow's been hijacked, and I'm pissed about it. The rainbow is a sign of heaven and good things. You know? It's not an autistic spectrum. It's not a gender spectrum. It's not an emotional spectrum. It's, it is divine light being split like a prism through the water falling through the sky through the 
water particles. It's it's heaven. It's a hologram. It's a, it's a divine sight to behold. The rainbow bridge to Valhalla. And I saw a lot of rainbows in this movie, and I and it and it made me so happy. To see it not have all of this mainstream attachment and flags and acronyms. It's just a rainbow in the sky. And it's magical. There's nothing magical about political acronyms and flags. Nothing magical about a flag. Nothing mystifying. Just rhetoric. I saw this movie dealing with a lot of really critical things. And they deserve to be a meme. They deserve to be brought back and understood in a new light um, because I really think these people were trying to do something something good now the later ones where they you know um, you know feminize everything and make it politicalized and acronymized um, in the 2000s are not good I don't think the 80s ones in the in the in the show I remember are pretty based I'm gonna go through all of them and watch them again and, and I really think everybody else should um, watch something that you show your children don't just have them in front of the iPad for hours and hours I was having this conversation with my sis um, sorry around here we say sis and I forget that that's a uh, another bullshit jargon term in the mainstream fuck the mainstream it used to be cool to say I'm gonna make it cool again fuck the mainstream anything mainstream fuck you fuck the mainstream but the mainstream says that anyway my sister and I were having this conversation about baby YouTube and uh, I noticed my nephew was just starting to act strange and do this very strange shit. He would have these trucks that he's playing with on a table, and then he would slowly have them go off the side of the cliff of the table and go, oh no, oh no, oh no, over and over in a loop. And eventually we found out there was this baby YouTube video of these trucks crashing and somebody going, oh no, oh no, oh no. So it's fucking up this this kid here. And um, he's getting he's getting obsessed in loops of chaos and stupid shit, disordered thought. And then the other day, he was eating a bowl of cereal, and then he started screaming fire, fire, and threw his bowl of cereal. And then there's this other YouTube video of like all of a sudden there's a nice video, and then there's a fire, everything's on fire, and everybody's screaming, and then it goes back to normal. It's abusing these kids mentally. It is fucking their minds up badly. And we all need to stop this baby YouTube, kids YouTube. We need to stop. We need to watch everything with your spouse. And and review it and discuss it together before you let your kid watch it. It's going to mess their mind up and they'll turn against you and you won't even know why. Because there'll be, you know, some kind of Chinese psyop they're doing through YouTube. Who knows what the hell's going on, guys? Who knows? But but watch out what you put in your brain. And I and I and I guess that's why this this Care Bears movie, man, moved me. I was like, this has a lot of meaning, and this is important. And. uh this is not what kids are watching now. 
they're watching garbage that is destroying their soul. And if you do it that early, I don't know what you can do later on for them. It's such a scary, that's a scary fucking thought. That's a scary thought. I don't know what's psychologically possible to, to deal with that sort of Pavlovian abuse. I don't know. I don't know. The limit, you know, that's torture, I think. I think it's torture. It's torturing their minds. It's giving them a dissatisfaction. It, it's, 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 um, aggravation. You know, movies. It's aggravation. No sense of release, relief. No sense of, uh, you know, resolve. No, no, no resolution. It'd be like if you heard a song and you didn't hear the end of the resolution of the song, the end note. You would feel bad. It makes you feel bad. It annoys the shit. You got to sing it yourself. You got to go like, do do, da 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 da, da da. You know what if I didn't do that last part? It would just annoy the shit out of all of you. You'd be like, my god, fuck, just finish it. What happened? And, it's, and there's videos like this of car crashes and fires all of a sudden doing this to children's minds when they're one or two or three years old. Destroying their minds. So don't be shy about watching kids' movies and finding that good part of yourself and dusting it off, you know, cleaning it up, cleaning your... your yourself up treating your kid self to something nice to give you a little hope during this holiday season watch the Care Bears it's a good movie man it's a good movie it's a good message and you'll feel good afterwards and that's what I'm all about I uh I just don't like watching disturbing shit anymore. Um, I just don't. I, I got exposed very early on to Xenomorphs, the Alien franchise, when I was like five or six. I didn't even know what sex was. And I was getting exposed to face rape, choking, um, people dying through pregnancy. I mean, that probably fucked my mind up badly. And this was just on TV. I was just flipping through channels, and I saw these spaceships, and I was like, ooh, spaceships, I like space. And uh, <laughs> I sat down and watched it, and this guy got just in the face, man. He had a helmet on and everything. I was like, oh, what do you do? It's helplessness. Help. I feel helpless. Same thing. Same thing. But imagine getting exposed to sh crazy shit like that a thousand times a day. A million times a year. I just saw a few movies that, that, that fucked me up. I remember I saw Big Trouble in Little China and that Chinese guy with the long fingernails put them together and shoot lasers out of it and his eyes was crazy. It scared the shit out of me. Maybe not, maybe not the rest of you, but I remember seeing that when I was a kid. I'm like, what the fuck? I turned the TV off. Scared me. Stuck in my head. I wanted to watch it and face it again. I had no idea what the movie was called. This is back in the day before TiVo. You don't even know what TiVo is. Before Netflix. Before you could figure out what the fuck you were watching, man. You didn't know unless you were there for the beginning or you wait around for the credits and go sit through the commercials. Having with me with the last Starfighter too. I was like, "What was that movie?" Didn't know for years. But I. But anyway, there's just a few things here and there that traumatize me. <laughs> These kids are getting traumatized, barraged with nihilism and helplessness and disorder. Bothers me. 
I don't like it. It's no bueno. Very bad. I probably got a lot more to say, but I don't want to ramble on. I just thought this movie was was great, and and it was a lot deeper than I remembered. I remember while we watched the Never Ending Story, and I was blown away. But this movie blew me away even more than the Never Ending Story because it really gets into and explores these uh, these concepts, these psychological concepts. Animation is a wonderful media. Um, and I think it can do a lot more than live action ever could hope to. Hope to. It just can't. You can't get away with the same emotional impact. Because here's the thing. We care about the story. We don't care about the face, the person, the actor, the ego of it. We care about the logos of it. And animation is logos driven. For the most part. For this is, I think. It's not that it's not this Ooh, look at me, look at me. I watched the new Dune movie and I hated it because it was all, look at me, look at me, zoom in my face. Look, I'm this new actor and look at me. I have no idea who you are, but zoom in and... It's fucking terrible soundtrack. I just hated it. You you think you're better than Brian Eno? You think you're better than David Lynch's 1984 Dune? Fuck you. And fuck any of you that say that movie sucked and that you didn't like the internal monologue voiceovers that was genius I love it love every bit of it fuck all of you that disagree I I don't even we'll go to war on that I went to go see that movie and the new Dune movie in the theaters and everybody's like, oh my god, I love it. Oh, it's, it's just so much better than that 1984 garbage. I really heard a fucking guy say that behind me. I wanted to throw my popcorn at him. Throw my drink at this guy. But I didn't. It's like, we're civil. We're not really into spice wars. I just need to go home. He said it was garbage. Son of a bitch. That was a fucking masterpiece. It was great. You know, and the tone of it was a fucking wonderful. And I love those little sound weapons and they added that in there. I don't care. I loved it. I loved it. They used their voice to project power. That's Christian as fuck. That's so Christian. And based. Get the fuck out of here. What happened, Denny Villeneuve? What happened? Your Blade Runner magic, man. Your rival magic. The fuck happened, man? The fuck are you doing? The fuck are you doing, man? It sucked. Wish Jordan Wowski would have made something with a dune. Or Inkle, you know, that's a wonderful comic book series I'm diverging too much off the topic of the video I'm gonna shut this thing down and uh, you know comment below join uh, join the discord um, join the chat talk about it watch the movie quit being so nihilistic and care about people all right Love y'all. Take it easy. And Merry Christmas. And call your mom. And hug your dad. <laughs>